So just a quick update on the biodiesel situation. Uh, here's the next batch. You can see it's uh, separating up real nice there. We've got a ton of oil. I've got uh, that one's three quarters full, a thousand liters in there. This one's practically three quarters full of uh, filtered centrifuged oil. There's a centrifuge. It's still working good. Um, <coughs> thing I wanted to mention here at the back, I replumbed the pump. So what we had before was uh, this quick disconnect actually was on a 45 degree and then it went up right here. So what I've done is <coughs> taken away the uh, 45 degree, put it in the vertical and this other one is in, in a 90 degree position. So it's very easy to take the pump on and off versus the way I had it before. And also I had a leak right here at this fitting so basically what you can do now is you can loose, loosen this compression fitting here, rotate this tighter if you have a leak at the pump, or you can loosen this compression fitting and you can rotate this tighter on the pump if you have a leak in the threads there. The biodiesel is pretty aggressive, so on this one I've used Teflon tape and the Teflon uh, paste type, a little bit of the paste type sealer, so I'm hoping that makes all the difference. And I've gone from the gray PVC to the white PVC, which is slightly uh, thicker. It's got more meat in the walls, um, although I haven't seen any deterioration on the gray stuff. And uh, when I did cut the pipe right here, uh, it was extremely clean inside. There was no heat fractures or any kind of damage on the inside of this pipe. So the, the Schedule 40 <coughs> pipe, uh, which is thicker than the stuff I got at Home Depot previously, Seems to be the way now to go. Is some pipe that I got off Home Depot, and you can see this is uh, it's very thin wall. It's uh, at least mm, the other one's maybe two or three times as thick as this that I've got plumbed in my system. So that's definitely not the kind of PVC you want to use. You want to use the thicker wall stuff. Just to give you some observations of my fueling station here, uh, this Northern Tools fuel pump has worked okay till this point. Uh, I've got this shut off nozzle on here now that uh, is a big pain in the butt. Uh, I'm probably going to put back the old nozzle because these shut off nozzles have too much restriction and the 12 volt pumps just don't have enough pressure uh, to uh, get those working right. Right now you can see here there's fuel in the filter up to here and there's air in the top and you just can't get that darn air out with this pump and you know you're pressing on the nozzle come on come on come on for like 20 minutes and still nothing so that's no good the original hose that came with this was kind of like a cloth type stuff this is a, a fillerite hose it's got uh, a wire on the inside ground wire um, you know there it is fillerite three-quarter inside diameter fuel transfer hose static wire made in USA well this stuff is sweating biodiesel through it as well so I gotta find a hose that's Viton rubber because anything that's not Viton rubber the biodiesel just eats it it's just incredible how it eats it and even see here the paints coming off the barrel it's just really aggressive stuff as far as a solvent goes so don't waste your money on any kind of regular hoses like I have here, make sure you get a, a good Viton hose. And if I find a source for them, I'll post it up at the end of the video. The fuel pump is item number 680480, and it's Northern Industrial Tools. It's northerntool.com. But uh, I have to check and see if the veins are still good after I get the new or the old nozzle back on the pump and uh, see how it flows. One other issue I had was on the. 15 gallon tank here and uh, I have a stainless steel net that I put in the bottom if you look at my other videos uh, if you look down there you can basically see you know where the where the valve is shut and when I had this filled yesterday you know I had 10 gallons of methoxide in here and it wasn't draining I had the valve open close open close nothing uh, I was getting pretty worried there. I had to basically put my mask on, open up the lid here, and uh, I took a welding rod here and basically jammed that down in the hole, 
eventually got it by smacking the welding rod with a hammer. Um, I tried rebar too, smacking it in there, and that wasn't working. Maybe the hole down there is too small where it goes through the valve, but in any case, uh, if you mix your methoxide and you wait too long, it's almost like the KOH precipitates out of the methoxide a little bit and, and kind of makes a hockey puck in there that blocks the flow completely and it's very hard like I couldn't get a, a rod through there or anything I had to hammer it through and then uh, once it got going uh, I basically just twisted the rod around to clear it out and it's fine now but that's something I'm gonna have to watch to make sure that doesn't happen again so after every time you drain this basically look down in the bottom open up the valve and make sure it's all all clear because the last thing you want to do is you know fish around in methoxide to try and clear a clear the uh, drain. Uh, most of the pumps I, I put my old fuel pump here in there and you can see where it was dipped in the methoxide. You see here it's kind of a chrome finish and here the bottom's basically eaten away and that was just dipping it in the methoxide. Surprisingly the rebar is fine. Um, so it's fairly corrosive stuff not something you want to have in any kind of steel barrels or any kind of steel or other metals in there so yeah that's just something to watch out for but uh, otherwise uh, it's going good I had a leak here which was the pressure relief on this filter so I basically just uh, cleaned the whole thing out, used some brake clean to clean the surfaces, dried it all out and used some of the automotive RTV sealant in there and it's fine, doesn't leak anymore uh, yeah, otherwise uh, everything's good.